Using AI, you can make visual effects like this. You can turn yourself into a girl and catfish your friends, or transform into any movie character. Thanks to AI, you can now do this seamlessly. In this video, I will show you three different levels of how you can go from a complete beginner to making more advanced shots like this one. For level one, we have easy effects that you can do with five or 10 minutes of your time. And for this entire video, I'm using OpenArt because I can do everything inside of this from using models like Klingo One to Google VO 3.1 to Nano Banana Pro, any model, they have it all in their one subscription. We're starting off with the first effect, which is changing the pen into a candle. Now, in order to do this, you first need to record footage of yourself holding a pen in your hand and moving it around your face. Then what we do is we grab a screenshot and we put it into Nano Banana Pro. So in OpenArt over here at images, I'm dropping in my image, which is the screenshot of me holding the pencil. And then I'm going to give it a prompt. So I'm just going to say, change the pen into a flaming candle. And now that gives me this result. So there we have it. We can now use this as a reference for the next bit, which is creating or video. So you want to download this image. Now that you got your image, you want to go over to the video tab on OpenArt and then you want to click video to video. The reason for that is because we're using Kling01. Now this model is insanely powerful and we will be using this throughout this tutorial. So you want to drop in the video of you holding that pencil around your face. Then you want to add in the image that you just made using Nano Banana. So here we have the image with the candle and now we're adding in our prompt. So for the prompt, we're going to ask it, replace the pen with the candle. And then very importantly, you want to say image one. So we're going to say replace the pen with the candle from image one and have the man move the candle around with a realistic glow from the candle. That's all you got to do. Now you click on create and then that gives you this result. Now you could also do this without a reference image. For example, here I did it without a reference image, but it doesn't look as consistent. So that's why adding in a reference image works a lot better. It's a bit more effort, but it works a lot better. The second effect that is beginner friendly that looks pretty cool is talking to other AI characters. So in this case, I got this video of me sitting on the couch where I'm pretending like I'm talking to someone. Yo, dude, last night was crazy, man. Seeing you in a club, dance with all those mamacitas there. Damn. And you? You are the crazy one. And what we're doing from this is we're doing the same steps. We're taking a screenshot at the part where you want to add something in there. So then we take that image, put it into the Omni reference. We add in an image of the character that we want to add in. In this case, I'm using Mickey Mouse. Then I'm going to add it in there. And then the last thing is I want to add in the Xenomorph and I'm going to put it right there. So we have this character also in or only reference. And then all we got to do is add in our prompt and I have it saying, have a realistic 3D animated Pixar style Mickey Mouse sitting on the couch left of him. And the Xenomorph is sitting on the right leaking saliva. So now we got our image. We make sure the settings is 16 by nine and we export it in 4K and then we click on create. Now this might give you a couple tries. For example, I got this result first, then I got this result and then I got this result. And I finally went with this one as this one is leaking saliva right there. As you see, if we zoom in on this image, the quality of my face is not that high, but it still works. So don't worry too much about the quality, but if you can, the higher the quality, the better your output will be. So now we download this image and we do the same step as last time. We're going over to video and then we're using video to video and then we're dropping in our original footage, which is here, me talking on the couch <laughs> like a crazy person. And then we're adding in that reference image right there. So for the reference image, I have this. The last step again is to add in our prompt, have the man talk to two characters on image one. Then Mickey Mouse is on the left, laughing and throwing his hands up and dancing and giggling. The Xenomorph is on the right, tilting his head sideways and salivating and waggling his tail. Basically, that's all I did. There's nothing more to it and there's no editing whatsoever. So that gives you this result.
Yo, dude, last night was crazy, man. Seeing you in the club, dance with all those mamacitas there. Damn. And you, you were the crazy one. Okay, now let's move over to level two. This is a bit more advanced because these shots require a bit of basic editing. But don't worry, I will try to explain it as easy as possible. So for the first effect, we're gonna do this lightsaber effect. And this one is surprisingly easy, but it needs a tiny bit of tweaking to make it look super good. Now, there are two methods to this. The first method is I just replace it with the lightsaber and then I can animate it and boom, we're done but i wanted to have me turn on that lightsaber so for this i first needed to generate a picture of me holding the handle or like the hilt of the lightsaber while it's turned off first you want to be recording your raw footage in this case it's me recording that pen and i'm pretending like i'm like waving a lightsaber around then what we do is we take a screenshot again of me holding the pen as a reference and that screenshot we're putting that into nano banana again so i basically asked nano banana pro to replace the pen with a short lightsaber hilt and it's turned off. So that is the first image that we did. Then for the second image, I exactly did the same, but this time I imported that hilt or the handle and then I asked it to turn the lightsaber on. And now we have this sick looking image of me as a Jedi. After that, you download both images and then you know the drill. We're going back to Kling 01. Here we are importing our lightsaber before footage. So this is just me <laughs> waving around my pen. And then we're adding in the reference the first reference that we're adding in is me with the lightsaber turned off. So then we're just going to give it the prompt where we replace the pen with the hilt and we have the lightsaber turned off. And that gives you this video. And I know this looks pretty dumb because the lightsaber is turned off, but we need that first second where I'm holding up the lightsaber in order to mask it with our next shot. So to have me actually turn on the lightsaber, we're going to use a new reference here and we're going to use the one where I have this turned on. So then we replace this prompt with a different prompt and we're basically saying that I'm swinging around the glowing blue lightsaber and the blue light is reflecting on my face. Now, if you generate this, then you will get a result like this. And to be honest, you could have done this one in the first place, but if you want to have that sick animation, then you need to do a bit of editing. So what I'm doing here is I've overlaid three different shots. So I have the raw footage, I have the hilt only, and I have the lightsaber turn on. Then I'm creating a mask. So for the basic editing, I'm using Premiere Pro. You could also be using CapCut as long as you can create a mask in your editing software. So what I did is I made a mask from the one where I just had the handle, and then I transformed it into this second video seamlessly. So it doesn't look like it's edited at all. It looks like the AI has done it itself. But that's where we have to use a bit of editing because AI still has a bit of glitches and the best AI videos that I have seen are highly edited and unfortunately that's where we're at right now but there's nothing we can do about it. Another effect that requires a bit of basic editing is a cinematic time lapse and for this one I created this shot. So I have me standing on the balcony and basically looking out um, over my boring view. Now what my goal was with this is I wanted to see different seasons so I wanted to have at night, I wanted to have in winter and I kind of want to see what you could pull off with this. After I recorded that footage where I stand around in different places, I took screenshots of all of them and then I prompted it where I changed the environment to nighttime or where I changed the weather to heavy snowing with piles of snow covering the edge in front of him. So those are the different references that I made. Then for each of them, I put it inside Kling video to video, so Kling 01. And then I also added in the reference of me during a heavy snowstorm. Now, the last step is combining that footage into your editing timeline and making some simple cuts to make it match and now it appears as if i'm doing like a time lapse where i've been standing on the balcony for hours during the night and even while it's snowing Another shot that's super easy to do, but requires a bit of basic editing is this product shot. So here I have me taking a can of Monster Energy out of the fridge. Now what I did is I took a screenshot at the part where I wanted to have a transition happening. Then all that I did is I put that can into the only reference and I added in my prompt. This time I'm using a bit of a more advanced prompt. So if you want to see this exact prompt that I used, then sign up for my free community where I will be sharing all of the prompts that I used to create this video. 
video. Essentially what I'm doing is I want to turn this into somewhat of a cold, snowy Christmas vibe ad. So this is my hand, but now transformed into some more of a product style ad. So now we have this image, make sure to download this. And then we're going over to video, but this time we're not using Kling R1, we're using Kling Start and End Frame. So if you go over to image to video, you can go and switch towards Kling 2.5. And with Kling 2.5, you can start making start and end frame. So as a start frame, you want to add in that screenshot of the can. And then for the end frame, you want to be adding in the edited image of your product. So now we have this. And now all that's left to do is to prompt what kind of transition we want to see happening. In this case, I want the camera to zoom in and the place starts to snow. The trees are coming out of the frame from the sides and the snow from the ground comes up from the bottom. So that is the type of transition that I have in mind. I'm going to do five seconds, 1080p, and that got me this result. Keep in mind though, AI is not perfect. You want to try this a few different times. As you can see, it took me a couple generations to get this shot. But honestly, it turned out really, really sick. Okay, we got level three. I hope you're ready for this because this one is a bit more advanced, but still not impossible to do. For this effect, we're gonna enlarge the fridge. And this has a bit more editing in there, and that's why it is an expert level. Now, let me explain how it works. So first, you wanna take your shot. So I have this shot where I'm just holding my fingers next to it. I'm pointing at it and I'm like enlarging it. Now, what I did before this is I took a screenshot of this fridge. Then I put it into Nano Banana, and then I asked it to change the monster fridge into an extremely small mini fridge and basically i wanted to add in like all the same details and logos so i prompted that in there that got me this result and this is perfect for moving on to the next step we're going back into Kling one video to video and then we're uploading the video of our like raw footage and then we're adding in the image of our fridge being small as a reference now all that's left to do is we're going to ask it to change this big fridge into the miniature size fridge and we want to keep the framing intact so i had a bit of trouble trying to generate this and that's why i added this note like keep the framing intact with the tv and the window so then you hit create and then that gets you a result like this now this looks really cool already but now we need to transition it from big to small and from small to big okay so let me now go into the editing and this is why it's a bit harder to do but i hope you're not overwhelmed basically what we're doing right here is i've dropped in all of my footage and the goal is to rotoscope the fridge so what i basically did is we're cutting out this mini fridge so i selected the fridge and then i made a mask so we have this rotoscope after this you want to do the exact same thing for the big fridge so we want to rotoscope this also so we have both of them like cut out and we can transition them now in order to make it appear as if the fridge is growing from a miniature fridge into a big fridge we want to make them both small and then enlarge them with some keyframes so that is the effect that i applied right here so i'm making it appear like it's growing so i did that for both the miniature one and the big fridge and then i transitioned them in between as they were growing to make everything smooth the last thing you want to do is you want to add in some shadows next to the fridge so this way it looks like it's actually changing into a bigger fridge because as you see the shadows they aren't there so now we're adding them in there now lastly to make everything look smooth we want to add in some motion blur and we want to do a bit of a camera shake once you add in all of these effects it looks like it's a seamless transition from a small to a big fridge and then if you combine all of these effects together you get something like this Now, if you want to do this yourself, all you need is a tool like OpenArt, where you can access Kling One, Nano Banana, and also start and end frames using either Kling or Vio. Now, all of these models might change around. That's why I would suggest using a tool like OpenArt so you can stay up to date with the latest models all in the one subscription. If you want to learn more cool things with AI, like for example, making cinematic AI ads, then click the video that's on the screen right now, and I will teach you how to make cool looking videos in the next video.